Howdy friends, this is Lance, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how do you make a hybrid learning situation, that means distance learning and face-to-face, -face work together at the same time. So let's say you have a lesson set up, you have a document that you're pushing out, or a Google Slides presentation that you're pushing out with various activities, but then there's the teaching portion of it that you want to capture for your students that maybe are at home, and you also want to do it live in front of your class. So that's the scenario here. This is not a scenario where you would pre-record it. This is if you're wanting to do it live and record and push it out to both your students that are in class as well as your students that are from afar. I'm gonna go through some steps here of what our scenario is at MSC of Steuben. We have PCs and we have them plugged into TVs. And then each teacher has a Chromebook device that has a fine tip stylus, allows them to nicely write on the screen and pull up things and, and do all kinds of fun stuff with it. That's our scenario, so that way you are clear. So the first thing you gotta do is, as a teacher at MSD of Steuben County, we're gonna pull up Google Meet from Google Classroom because it's more secure than if you use Google Calendar. We're gonna pull it up from Google Classroom and then turn off the microphone, number one, and turn off the sound. So those two things need to happen on your PC before you do a hybrid situation like this. So I'll do that first. So here I am in Google Classroom. It's an example, a nice breakfast foods example there. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that Google Meet is on first. Now you'll see that I have a Google Meet link right there. You may not, and you need to make sure that you activate that. Now the reason why this is more secure is because Google Meet, in Google Classroom, students can't get into your Google Meet unless you're present in the meeting. So I go to settings and I scroll down and I should find a spot that talks about Google Meet, like so, right about there. And then you can turn on and generate a link. I've already generated a link, that's why I see one. And you can also make them visible or invisible to students, like so. I'll save that and leave that activated so students can see it, so that my students from a distance can participate. So I have my set time that students can participate and I'm also going to record this. I need to pull this up on my PC here. And I don't have to have the camera on and I don't need the microphone on. But there's one more important step and that is the sound itself. You can do this a couple of different ways. One, you can go to your PC here, go down to the speaker down here at the bottom and you can slide that guy over so that way it's off. You can do it that way. Another easy way, nice lovely sound, it lets you know how loud it is. Another easy way you can do it is just push on the speaker icon right there. It'll mute it automatically so you don't even have to worry about it. So now we're good to go. That's turned off and this is important. Microphone off on that and speaker. And the reason why is because otherwise you'll get a nasty echo between your Chromebook as well as your TV. And nobody wants that. So important steps there when you're setting up this type of scenario. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit join right there and join the meeting like so. And now I'm in. Hit this little X right here so that way that screen goes away and I'm ready to present. The other thing I'm going to do, this is another step, is I'm going to change the settings in my Google Meet on my PC. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the three dots on the bottom right. And I'm going to choose change layout and I'm going to change that to one called spotlight. So I'll select that. I'm going to choose spotlight and the reason why is because whoever is presenting that's going to be the full screen. Another option and this is totally optional whatever you want to do is you can also make your Google Meet session go full screen. So that is when I did the spotlight it's just going to do from there to down there. It's not going to do the entire screen. If I want to do the entire screen, what I need to do is I need to select the three dots on the top right, and I need to choose this icon right here, which is full screen, that little box. And now my Google Meet session is actually full screen. Okay, so notice all I'm doing here is I have an empty Meet session going, nothing's going on other than that. The next part I need to do if I want to present this and I want to start recording and I want to do the lesson, so I would just have this up and running 
the next part is to run Google Meet from my Chromebook. So I have it set up on my PC, microphone off, sound off, full screen, spotlight. Those are my settings, okay? I'm gonna select my Google Meet session on my Chromebook, and I'm gonna join it. And now you can see I'm showing the entire class. Don't panic, that's not how you're gonna use it. You're not gonna use the camera to your Chromebook. What you are gonna do is choose to present. So down here at the bottom on my Chromebook, there is a present now button. I'm gonna hit present now, and I'm going to choose to share my entire screen. And I'm gonna select my picture, and then the share button turns blue right down there. I'll hit share, and pretty soon, up there, my Chromebook is gonna be shared. And anything I do will be up there. So now I could potentially be doing a live session with my students. I could be switching back and forth between tabs. A great tool in this scenario is, for example, Google Keep. I like Google Keep because you can write very nicely on it, or you can use Jamboard. I love Jamboard too. Either tool is fantastic. So actually, in this case, I'm gonna use a Jamboard. So I'm gonna hit Jamboard here. I'll create a new one for fun. And now I have some fun pen tools that I can use right directly on the screen. And it has some fun post-it notes that I can use as well. And you can move these ideas around. And the students are viewing this both up there as well as at home. Now, what if I wanna record this session? Well, I can record it a couple of different ways. A simple way is to just do it from my PC alone. So if I go to my PC here, you can do it either PC or Chromebook, it doesn't matter which one you wanna launch it from, but whenever you're ready to launch it, you can click on the three dots on the bottom right and you can hit record meeting. I'll ask if you asked for consent, I'll hit accept. And up on the top left is where it's going to tell me if I'm recording. So now I'm recording, it's running, and anything that I do is not only being broadcast, but it's also being recorded. When it's all said and done, I need to stop the recording. So I click on the three dots again, and there's a stop recording button there. And I'll hit stop. And those items go into a folder in Google Drive called Meet Recordings. So that's where you can access those later. When I'm completely done, I can stop presenting. All I would have to do really is on my Chromebook, just close all, all my tabs, close Google Meet, I'm out. So just to recap some of the things that we just went through, you could have that Google Meet up on your PC, you gotta make sure it's up on your PC, up on your display. You'll turn off your microphone and mute the sound on your PC so you don't get an echo. On your display, what you'll wanna do is you're gonna want to change the view on the three dots. You go to your change view and you change it to spotlight. You're going to go to full screen on Google Chrome, so that way you have more real estate up on your TV. That's the main reasons for step one and two, and those really are the most time consuming. But once you have those up and running, you can pretty well just leave the Google Meet up and running. So then anytime you want to present, you can open Google Meet on your Chromebook, hit present now, present your entire screen. And there are some other options there. If you're familiar with them, feel free to use them. But entire screen is the simplest one. Uh, and then it's going to pop up with a a box with a picture of your screen. You select your picture and you hit share. And then you're ready to teach. And then if you need to record it, you can record the session as well. I hope that all of this was helpful to you and best wishes to you as you are in a situation of hybrid teaching.